I am the opposite. I am <laughs> minute by minute. Everything is on that sheet. If it's not on the itinerary, we don't do it. No, I'm just kidding. But I, I plan it all. People that just like go somewhere with no plan no, stress doesn't make sense me. me. You're wasting time. <laughs> yeah. You paid money. You That's planned. Right. Make a plan. That's right. <laughs> Welcome to Young and Adulting, a podcast of the Young Adults community at Christ Fellowship Church. Our hope is to create a safe place for authentic conversation around the ins and outs of life as we all try to navigate following Jesus in the world we live in today. Thanks for joining us and welcome to the conversation. Hey guys, welcome back to Young and Adulting. We're in season three. We're having these how-to conversations. And today we're talking about how to travel on a budget. And we have Pastor Ryan McDermott here What's with going us. going on? And Rachel Kaiser. Hey. Welcome, guys. Thank you. Excited to have y'all on. Um, since you guys are both so well-versed in traveling, I have some rapid-fire questions on traveling. Are you guys ready? Let's go. Absolutely. Cool. Do you roll or fold your clothes? Packing cubes all the way. Packing cubes. Packing, Me yes. Too. I'm telling. Okay. I unpack when I get somewhere in five minutes as if I live there. Oh, see, I just live out of the packing cubes. Oh, no. But okay. The ones so that like great. fold up. Yes. And you like pull it out and it's. Uh, no. No. Just, no. just the, just the <laughs> loose <laughs> packing cubes. Keep oh. everything organized. Yeah. Yes. By category. So category. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. For sure. Hey, come on. That is awesome. Rachel. Okay. Cool. Next one. Are you driving or are you flying? Flying. 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 Everywhere. Faster, the faster, the better. <laughs> yes. <gasps> okay. When people move to like, you know, Tallahassee or something, like we live in South Florida, right? People who live up there, I'm like, right. I will never see you again because I would get on a plane <laughs> to <you>. California <laughs> before I would ever drive seven hours to see you. 100% I agree. Okay. So since you guys are flying, are you bringing a carry-on or are you checking in your bag? Carry-on. Honestly, it's going to depend where I'm going because I like to be prepared for everything. So if it's longer than a weekend, I'm probably checking. Even though I wish I was that wanderlust girl that like Mm -hmm. just jumped on a plane. I was going to say like (laughs) it may not be a fair question like to a guy and a girl, but carry on. I wish that was my life. I wish. Carry on. All right. Um, Going to the beach or to the mountains? We live at the beach. Yeah. I'm going to the mountains. We do. I, I typically would say mountains, but honestly, I will go anywhere. (laughs) <laughs> Anywhere. But we're on a plane, I'm going. Beach or mountains? Yes. yes, exactly. Yes. Do you guys make an itinerary when you go on vacation or do you go with the flow? Ooh, you first. I make a loose itinerary. So okay. I like to know what I'm going to do, but I'm not saying that at nine o'clock I'm doing this and 11 o'clock I'm doing this. But A, when I travel, food is huge. So I'm going to know where I'm going to go to eat. And I'm probably going to know what day I'm going to try and get there, but it all depends. Like if I'm going to a national park, I'm going to plan out my hikes. If I'm going to a city, I'm probably going to make reservations. So it's loose and planned, but it's not rigid and by the minute, if that makes yeah. sense. I am the opposite. I am <laughs> minute by minute. Everything is on that sheet. If it's not on the itinerary, we don't do it. No, I'm just kidding. But I, I plan it all. People that just like go somewhere – with no plan, no, stress it doesn't make me. Sense me. You're wasting time. <laughs> yeah, you paid money. You that's planned. Right. Make a plan. That's right. <laughs> okay, well, that's a great segue into our, our last question. Okay, are you sleeping in and relaxing, or are you up early doing all the things, early. all the activities, early, all the things, early, Even and I'm on the, vacation, oh, every yeah. vacation, and I'm the crazy person that works out on vacation mostly. Oh yeah, yeah. So it's like I wake up, I work out, we hit the day, yeah. and we go to bed at like yeah. midnight. That being said, if it's like a beach resort totally. or like like right. you, I'm going here to do nothing. I'm right. like, yeah. That's different. But if you but if there's stuff to do and you're not at a place like that, I we're can up sleep early. in at home. Yeah. True. That's right. Come on. You're so right. Exactly. Okay. So I want to hear from you guys your top three places that you've been to and then your favorite, cool. like let me know number one all time favorite place. Oh, all right, you go. That's not fair. Okay. So here's the thing. I love national parks. I love cities. And I love mountains and and beach. I love it all. So I picked a couple different ones. There's four. She Um, said three. Sorry. I know, but there's four. So (laughs) it's technically five, but two of them kind of go together. Okay. So I loved Grand Tetons and Yellowstone. That was an unreal. like Two for one. Well, they're next to each other. It was my same trip. I did them together. So in my mind, they're the same thing. Um, It had me. I'm also the person that researches where I'm going to move to that city every time I get home. Mm. Every time. I'm like, how could I live in Wyoming? (laughs) So loved Grand Tetons and Yellowstone. Um, Boston is has become like one of my favorite cities in the U.S. It's just so 
I loved it. I loved the food. You can walk around. The weather, we went in March. It was perfect. Um, St. John and the Virgin Islands is a hidden gem. Like Ooh. for the Caribbean, You're Ryan had to, to remind me. <laughs> Ryan had to remind me how much I love St. John, but um, it's amazing and also great food. And then I went to Prague a couple summers ago, and I was when we went, we were going to Germany and Austria as well. And I was I knew nothing about Prague, and when we were there, the whole time I was obsessed with it. So I loved Prague. I thought it was super fun. Okay, I'm gonna follow your example and do like different yeah. ones. So. Uh, Ireland is one of my favorite Ooh, places okay. on, on the planet. feel like I could go and spend a ton of time there and just like never get to the bottom of all there is to do. I love Montana. Yes. Like big sky, skiing, Yellowstone, all yeah. that. Love it out there in Montana, Wyoming. Uh, one of the coolest places I've ever been, uh, a couple of years ago, we went to the Azores. I the still want to go there ever since you said it. Where is that? My Okay, this is like probably too much information, but I literally <laughs> pride myself on like the coolest things for me are doing things that nobody else has done. Yeah. I don't know. I'm just weird that way. Um, yeah, it's like an island chain off the coast of Portugal. Okay, so it's like that the, is so cool. Yeah, It's like the Hawaii of Europe, right? Like wow. similar if you think about it that way. Um, it was unbelievable and like super, super cheap. He amazing. has this picture from it that's like, <laughs> a rainbow and mountains and like something jumping out of well, the like, water at the same. It looked like a desktop <laughs> screensaver. It's literally, yeah, like uh, it, it, we'll put in the show or something. But oh it's literally like we're on a boat. There's a volcano in the background with like you know ice at the top, a it's rainbow unreal. in the sky, it's and unreal. like a whale flute. I need to see this picture. <laughs> it's literally unbelievable. Oh, that's so. awesome. Okay, you kind of like made me think of a question. What country do you guys think has the best food? Because mm. you guys have been oh. to all these countries. I need to know. Best food. I just love food. So if it's good. <laughs> Anywhere. If it's good. You got to like break it down. What country oh, has the best? Gosh. Like, that's a, no. that's a hard question. Yeah, desserts. Oh, Ooh, desserts. Gosh. You got to go to Italy. Italy. Italy is the dessert I haven't been place. there yet, but I'm dying to go. Gelato, tiramisu, oh con- cannolis, all that stuff. Yeah. I'm like a huge soft pretzel person. I know that's Ooh. super random. So when we did our like Bavarian tour, <laughs> I was everywhere I went. I'm like, soft. okay, hold on. There is this dessert. I just thought of something. <laughs> that was like a core memory right there. You're like... When so we went to Salzburg, Austria, okay. and also my mom and I did a Sound of Music tour. We like got on a bus. People were singing. It was for her, but it was great. Um, but we ended up at some random bakery, and there was this dessert. I can't even describe it to you, but my dad and I still talk about it. I still bring it up. I still look at pictures of this dessert. <laughs> I would literally fly to Salzburg for it. It was. It had me searching. You know how sometimes like European stores will have like an American location. It had me like Googling if there was some American location of this bakery because it was so good. That's it awesome. doesn't exist. But if you ever go to Salzburg, let me know. Okay. I will tell you where or, to go. Or, you know, like Epcot or something. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. That's same. where I'm going. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But I will let There's you know this, when I'm like, at Epcot. pretzel bread pudding in Germany in Epcot. It's amazing. <laughs> same thing. Same thing. Oh, my gosh. Um, well, as young adults, we always want to hit these like budget saving opportunities, right? But sometimes you get what you paid for. Yeah. So are there ever times that you guys, you hit these budget-friendly dis- er, options, but it might have just not went so well? Mm. Mm. Any like stories? Like you booked a bad Airbnb. Yeah, like, like cheap flight, mm-hmm. you know, oh, feared yeah. for your life kind of thing. Yeah. I've been on some of those. Um, so <laughs> we uh, we do a lot of like tent camping and stuff like that. Like okay. we, I mean, we like all different kinds of trips. So one of the like budget ways we would travel is like we'll do a lot of camping and stuff like that. And so this isn't so much what you're describing, but I remember this one weekend we were like tent camping for like four days and it just like it didn't stop raining the entire mm. time. Oh, no. It was no. like great. You know, we paid 50 bucks a night or whatever for a campsite, yeah. but it's like the most miserable experience. Like we saved money. It's like you're on Survivor. <laughs> yeah. It was like you couldn't get dry. You couldn't get warm. Like it was just oh, miserable a couple of days. Awful. So that, that. that's one that comes to mind. Yeah. No, that does not sound fun. <laughs> You're not, I don't. I don't picture you as like a tent camper, Rachel. Me? No, <laughs> yeah. Honestly, I would do it. You're a glamper. I would do it. I just remember the whole checked bag thing. I like to be prepared <laughs> right. and comfortable. Checked like, bags and my routines don't from really. home. Yeah, don't really translate to a tent. I could do it though. I'm I'm down to rally for anything. <laughs> um, so in 2020, it was September. 
my best friend and I, we sat down and we're like, we're going on a trip. We are so over being like stuck at home. So we booked this crazy, we still like to this day, we'll talk about it. Like we can't believe we did this on our own. We booked this this trip out west and we did Grand Canyon. We did Zion. Like Zion is also top of my list. Yeah, top place. of my list. Um, but obviously we were trying to, you know, be budget friendly. She had the Marriott hookup. So for 99% oh, of our nice. stays, we stayed in Marriott, which was great. So if you've ever been to the Grand Canyon, you know there is nowhere to stay there with, in, except for like a few places by the entrance of the park that are really expensive um, or like an hour and a half away in Flagstaff, which is not fun if you want to go multiple days. So we randomly found this Airbnb and we didn't, I mean, we looked at the pictures, we did our due diligence, we knew we were mm-hmm. two girls traveling alone, but it was like a trailer, like in a trailer park. And some guy had, like, taken a trailer and cut it up into little units. And we, like, checked it out earlier in the day to make sure, like, we knew where we were going because we knew it would be pitch black that night. Right. And we are like, okay, this is slightly sketchy, but we can't cancel now. We'll lose our, you know, whatever $90 we paid to stay there. (laughs) And um, so we came back at night, and it was terrifying. Like, walking—we parked our car so close to the entrance of our door that— you could barely like you could barely even Open get around the, the car. Yeah. And so it and it was tiny inside. We were like stepping over each other to like luckily there was a restroom and okay. a bathroom but and a bed. But um yeah, it was You wake up and you're like, we survived. It was yeah, <laughs> and it Basically. was thirty degrees outside, which we are not prepared for. And it's a it's that's like awesome. a very thin trailer. That's so yeah, one. that was not Wow, fun. that's a scary one. Also time zones out west. If you ever go out west, <laughs> it will weird. it will mess with you. Oh, my goodness. That's awesome. Well, you guys got any tips and tricks for our young adults listening? Because I know I want to hear all of them. So tell us best traveling hacks, discount codes, anything. (laughs) (laughs) That's awesome. Um, Yeah. I mean, make friends who live different places. Tip number one. (laughs) Start a list now. (laughs) Yeah. like, And when your friends move across the country, like, don't wait. Don't think you're going to go there someday. Like, go now. So. Um, I mean, for us, this is not like a tip or trick necessarily, but like always start with your flights. Like wherever you're trying to travel, just always start with your flights. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you can save money on your flights or you can get, you know, you end up flying from Tuesday to Wednesday or different things like that, like it's all going to help you be able to plan from there. So I think if you start with the flights um, and just be flexible, like anytime you're, you're going into a trip and you're like, I only have these days. If you, if you start your planning with like, I want to go here Mm. to this place on these days, you will not save money. Like that's just your, all the flexibility you're cutting out in the beginning. So instead you're like, man, this window of time, these Mm -hmm. couple of places, it's going to set you up for a lot of success. And then you just, you buy your flights first uh, you have a 24-hour cancellation policy. I'm sure everybody knows yeah, this, but yeah. just throwing it out there, 24-hour cancellation policy in the United States when you buy flights. So you got basically just buy them. Like, yeah. Don't wait, buy them. And then you got 24 hours yep. to like ask for the time off and mm-hmm. <laughs> make sure that's cool, you know, like, and look into the trip enough to know if you're going to be able to make it work. Like yeah. start with the big rocks. So like rental car, if you need one would be the next thing, yep. you know, mm-hmm. whatever. Um, and you can see right from the onset, like if if this is going to work. But if you think like, oh, well, I'm I'm not going to book that flight right now because I'm going to check on all these things. It will be gone. Yeah. Just know, yeah. like right now, decide in your mind it's going to be gone. Um, but if you can be flexible and go like, man, around this time, I want to travel to some of these places. Um, and and then even last minute, if you have the flexibility, a lot of times uh, you're going to find a lot better deals. Like oh, a couple yeah. weeks out. Nice. That's how I book like most of my trips. <laughs> yeah. They all come Which may up not work last for, minute. Yeah. Depending on what your occupation is. But yeah. if you do have that kind of flexibility, that right. always helps. Yeah. That's great. No, I love that. That's one thing I was going to say too is flexibility is key. But um, if you use Google Flight, like yes, you know, my friend. it is the great. <laughs> honestly, sometimes screen. I do it for fun. <laughs> it's my home screen. Like Wait, literally, when Google you open flights? my browser, it's just, Google just Flights. Just Google Flights. Are yeah. It's like, oh, okay. No, I'm 100% That's serious. Amazing. <laughs> Um, I was For telling Nina today, I was like, I was looking at flights to Barcelona earlier because I was, mm-hmm. you know, in the travel mode thinking. So I'm like, oh, and I just like went on there for fun. But it's so fun to use and it's yeah. easy. But one thing that I always do is if you don't know about this, Google Chrome has like an incognito mode. And we all know that like the Internet's always listening to us. Totally. And so it'll start to track you. And there's a myth. I don't know if it's true or not. But if you go on the Internet, just like in the regular browser, It'll track you, and the next time you go visit, your prices are supposed to be, like, 
Yeah, that's what I've higher. heard. Yeah. yeah. So incognito mode is supposed to protect you. I don't know if it does, but I'm like I tried and true. Dude, I, I do incognito too. mode every I believe time. That. Yeah, because I don't know. I don't want to risk it. Yeah. But incognito mode. Incognito mode. Okay. Yeah, it's good. Another thing that I always do when I'm booking is I have a note on my phone that has every single like travel number because it's so I every time I would get to check out and not know my my account number or anything. Yeah, and if you're not set all up on all place. the airlines and like all the hotels, it's free right. and you can keep track of points. You don't have to have a credit card, but yep. um, keeping all that information in one place nice. is super helpful That's because. Good tip. It's yeah, it's so nice, especially when my parents are booking for me and they're like, "What's your number?" I'm like, "Uh, I don't know. Let me text it to you really quick." That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, I would say just another thing on that is like if you are looking at fr- flights or anything you're trying to book with friends, um always make sure that you check like one the cost of one ticket and mm-hmm. not just the cost of like three tickets. Oh yeah. Uh because a lot of times you can get, you know, one or two tickets at a at a cheaper price mm-hmm. and then you you will pay the higher price for like the third or fourth ticket or whatever, but then by the time you you do the math in the end like you saved considerable money cuz you bought them four separate tickets instead of oh, all Oh wow. Yeah. So you got to Got to look yeah. at some of that. Well, in addition to that, depending on where you're going, booking one way tickets sometimes is cheaper than like yeah. buying round oh, trip. Okay. And there, Google has a feature too. If you're trying to do something where you're going to a couple different places, mm-hmm. the multi city tool. So you'd put in like if I'm flying out of Palm Beach and I'm flying to Phoenix, but I want to fly back from Flagstaff. Right. You can actually multi-city. do all of that in the same transaction. So oh, it's that's really awesome. Helpful. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. Southwest is not on Google Flights. If you're a Southwest person, mm. they don't pop up. I am not. A I know Southwest you're not. I was going to say, I'm not. Know. I can't. It stresses me out. The seat thing? It's yeah, not it's, for me. it's rough. I just oh, want to have a seat. Interesting. I just <laughs> want to free bag just thing, though. The checked bag girl knows that. So it's helpful. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, what, what advice would you give to someone that is wanting to travel, but maybe doesn't have the resources or maybe the time right now isn't right? What, what advice would you give to that person? Uh, I think for us, like we, we do budget for, Mm -hmm. for travel. Um, and so there's a lot of things that we choose not to do. Mm -hmm. So, um, I have no doubt that there are people genuinely who are like, I don't have the resources to to do this. Absolutely. I've, we've been there many times, you know, like, and there's times now where we want to do something and we'd go, we just don't have the resource to do that. However, we've made some decisions like, you know, we don't do birthday gifts, we don't go out to dinner. Mm. We don't do Christmas. Get, like we, there's just things we don't do because we go like, man, we'd rather put all that money aside and do something together yeah. and travel. Oh, that's so cool. Um, so half the time I would go like, maybe you do have the resources, mm-hmm. you know, like if you cut out the Starbucks and you st- stop some of the spending and do some things. Uh, but then obviously, you know, there there are times when it's difficult and that's where like, you know, traveling with friends can reduce the cost. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, the loyalty programs that you mentioned are all free. You can rack up some points in that way. Yeah. It doesn't all have to be like credit card points going to debt, which uh, is whatever. But, you know, there's other ways of doing it. So that would be one thought. Yeah. Yeah. That is exactly what I was going to say. If it's something you want to do, make it a priority. Yeah. And I mean, $5 a day at Starbucks adds up. And yeah. that's, totally. a, that's a flight. At the end of the month, you probably could be buying a flight instead of 35 venti yeah. cold brews. And so totally. <laughs> I think, you know, you got to plan and prepare for the season where you can. And yeah. so starting even just in small increments of saving up, whether it's whether it is finances or, or your time, even saving up time off. I know sometimes when you transition jobs, you don't get as much. So being intentional with how you take your time off. And yeah, that's good. Yeah. Like somebody said once, like uh, told me like $30 a day is like 11 grand a year. You know what I mean? Wow. So, crazy. So, that is crazy. So if you like, by the time you eat Starbucks and mm-hmm. Uber Eats mm-hmm. and Target. all the thing, yeah, like yeah. Yeah. My, my terrible Amazon Prime habit, whatever, exactly. like <laughs> by the time you you add that up, it's like you you can go a lot of places for $11,000. Totally. You know what I mean? yeah. So, yeah. I think something too that I've done and I've had the privilege of doing is just taking advantage of when opportunities do arise. Um, I do a lot of traveling with my family and my parents are pretty inclusive when it comes to, hey, we're going to go this place. Do you want to come? And and sometimes it's not the most glamorous place, but I'm like, hey, it's a chance for me to see a new city. It's a chance for me to get out of my element yeah. and experience something new. So I'm like, as long as you want to keep inviting me, I am coming. Isn't it funny how like in middle school and high school, you like don't want to go places yeah, right. with your parents? <laughs> like, no, mom. 
mom. Ugh. Yeah, and then you're like 22 with bills, Please and you're me. like, I want to go with you. I'm there. <laughs> I will move heaven and earth to make this happen. <laughs> yes, exactly. I love it. Well, I want to know, where are you guys headed to next? Mm. Next adventure, Pastor Ryan? Or Rachel? I'll go first because mine's probably not as exciting. <laughs> I'm just, um, I got a couple trips planned to go see some family for the holidays, and so yeah. I have goals for next year, but nothing booked yet. So. Okay, all right. Yeah. We got some camping trips, which I, I'm a big fan of, mm-hmm. but our, our next couple of like big things, um, we're going to California, Oh, like after Christmas kind of thing. Uh, uh, love Cal- California. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Just there's so much to to do. There's so much, and, and not the cities, like there's so much, and they have nine national parks, like, wow. you know, thousands of miles of coastline. Incredible. Anyway. Uh, then, uh, March, we're going to Montana, which is like my favorite place. We're going to go skiing. And then Iceland is our big tri- trip next year. So wow. it'll be the second time we've gone to Iceland. The last time we went in like the dead of winter, we went in March Oh wow! Uh, to like see the Northern Lights and all that. We brought our son at the time. He was six months old. Oh. It was like his first international trip was Iceland. So we're going in May, uh, to, to do Iceland. That is amazing. I got to get planning to keep up with you. (laughs) Well, you know what I was saying about like last minute, right? So basically Uh like your most opportunity for savings and travel is to book as soon as you can or as late as you can. It's when you decide like, you know, three to six months out that you want to do something. It's like it's going to cost you. But like, you know, most flights are available like 280 days before the flight itself. And so if you if you book like as they come up, usually there's some savings there or again if you wait. But uh, And we're on complete opposite ends of the spectrum. <laughs> yeah, you're like, wait, wait, <laughs> next weekend I might do something, but I just I'm like <laughs> that stresses me out. Yeah. So I love it. Well, thank you both for being on the podcast. I know I learned a lot. Our young adults learned a lot. Uh, young adults, we love you. We will see you next time on Young and Adulting. Thanks for joining us for this episode of Young and Adulting. Follow us on Instagram at cf.youngadults. And if there's a topic you'd like to talk about, we want to hear about it. Send us an email or leave a comment with your thoughts. We'll see you next time.